Hi everybody, the reason I'm doing this video is to clear up a little ambiguity associated with simultaneous multi-track re recording in Logic Pro 10. Now most of the people I've seen on YouTube who use Logic Pro 10 use a USB interface with multiple inputs, uh, something like the Scarlet series or, or, or whatever. But uh, if you're like me, uh, I use a Mackie Pro FX12 V2 mixer, which is typically something that you use for live performances. It just, and it has one USB output into the computer, just like uh, any of the other uh, audio interfaces, but it does not really support simultaneous tracks, or, or I should say multiple tracks for recording. So let's take a look at um, how we set this up, because you can, in a way, uh, get logic to do at least two multi-tracks, uh, simultaneous multi-tracks using a conventional mixing board. So I have an audio track here, um, but I'm, uh, I'm going to delete it so that we can simulate opening logic for the first time so you see what you get. So let's delete this track and this is what you will see when you open logic for the first time. And it's where you get a chance to select where your audio inputs are coming from, what sort of inputs you want. Now under audio input, uh, this is where you'll see a lot of people on YouTube doing these tutorials who use um, a, a, a proper digital interface. You, they will you'll see many, many input uh, selections here. But as you can see, I just have uh, really three selections here, input one, input two, and input one and two. This is a result of the hardware that I'm using to connect my instruments to my computer. Uh, and in my case, it's just a regular mixing board. I'm using a Mackie Pro FX 12 V2. Uh, so even though I have 12 channels on my mixing board, I only am seeing uh, really two inputs here. So why two inputs only? Well, what this really is, is that the Mackie is capable of outputting a stereo output into your computer. Uh, and the stereo can be broken up into uh, a left and right side mono. Left side mono will be input one, right side mono will be input two, and then input one and two will be a single channel, a single stereo channel. Okay, so let's start generating some tracks here. What I'm gonna do is select input one with ascending, uh, input monitoring and record enable, and I'm going to select two tracks and hit create. Right, so as we can see, we've ha we have two tracks here, um, with and both uh, have uh, record enable and input monitoring. So this is telling us that we can indeed uh, simultaneously multi-track record on both of these tracks. The next thing I want to do is select track one and go over to the, to the channel strip and look at the input selection. Uh, that audio one should be on input one and then audio two should be set to input two. Once again, this means one is on the left side and one is on the right side, but we, we are using them as mono tracks right now. To further demonstrate what I'm talking about, I'm gonna generate a third track. So this will be uh, with input one and two selected and all the other parameters the same. It'll just be one track we're generating this time. So I'm gonna hit create. And then I'm just gonna drag it below so that uh, I can properly uh, show you what I'm talking about. Now notice something. Uh, we have two levels going on here and on track three, it looks like a combination of track one and track two. And this makes sense because once again, uh, track three is really just one stereo input showing the left side and right side. And audio one is just only the left side and audio two is just only the right side. Now the reason you're seeing two different levels is I actually have two microphones set up in my studio right now. On input one, I have a condenser microphone which is a bit far away from me. And then on input two, I have a dynamic microphone which is a lot closer to my face. And the reason I've just separated them is that so that you could see definitively that we do have two different audio sources coming in. Now look at what happens when I try to arm these tracks simultaneously. 
what you'll see is that I can arm track one and track two simultaneously, or I can arm track three. What I can't do is I can't arm track three with any of the other tracks. And the reason for that is that track three is already a stereo track. This hopefully just hammers in the point that we're not getting multiple inputs. All we're doing is our mixer is allowing us to separate the left and the right into two mono inputs and then simulate it as simultaneous multi-tracks. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit record on track one and track two so we can get a simultaneous multi-track recording on two different microphones. Okay, and I'm talking into the condenser microphone right now. As you can see, I'm getting a higher level on audio one, which is coming into input one. Meanwhile, we're still seeing that audio two is recording, but you're not getting much of a level there. Now I'm gonna move over to the dynamic microphone. Okay, and now I'm on the dynamic microphone, and you can see that uh, we're getting a signal on the dynamic mic. You're barely getting anything on the condenser because I'm speaking quietly and I'm close up to the dynamic so that the condenser doesn't really pick up too much. But we are getting simultaneous multi-track recording. Okay guys, so hopefully that does help clear up some of the confusion associated with using your USB mixing board into your DAW. Uh, once again, it's just a matter of selecting each input and panning one left and one right. Uh, the limitation being that you can only do a maximum of two. But for the most part, I think uh, two inputs is certainly for anybody recording on their own at home. Uh, you, that's, that's more than sufficient. It's only when you have to do things like a full band or a drum kit or something where this becomes a lot more constricting. So I hope you found this useful and uh, take care.